Hi everyone, Foster here, and I'd like to spend a few minutes with you today talking about the situation in Greece and its implications for the world and for each of us. I believe the more informed we are, the more preemptive we can be in the face of threatening situations. So let's try to translate some news. Greece is undergoing what they call austerity measures. They're supposed to be tightening their belts and reining in spending. One translation of this that I would suggest is that they're supposed to be giving up anything they have left and starve if necessary in order to bail out Goldman Sachs and the Wall Street $32 trillion derivative scheme that's behind all of this and then pay back the loans of fake money their corrupt government took on in their names. So we're seeing riots in the streets, we're seeing burning buildings, we're seeing hunger, hopelessness, and despair. Greece is in a classic death spiral. The debt is getting bigger while the economy is shrinking. But so are the rest of us. This is happening in virtually every country around the world. I want to suggest we're like debt slaves being harvested for our money and for our labor in the financial coup d'etat that Catherine Austin Fitz calls the breakaway civilization. Why does she call it that? Well, these people have most of the world's money. They have their own secret societies, their own rules, black projects, intelligence agencies, mercenary armies, space programs, and more. The so-called money masters have leveraged and interlinked the entire system so much that the default of Greece could start the inevitable falling of dominoes in banks and whole countries very soon. It could be months, it could even be weeks. So why are Ben Bernanke and the other central bankers still printing money? Are they clueless? Do they not know that there's no way out going that direction? I think not. I suggest that they've been planning this inflation and timing the catastrophe. George Soros and the heads of the World Bank and the IMF have recently come public with their warnings about an imminent global financial collapse. Now, with their capability to manipulate such a scenario, they're apt to know. I think it's a classic problem-reaction-solution scenario. The problem? A global economic collapse, possibly in conjunction with the new war in the Middle East, maybe two. The reaction they're looking for? Our fear, our confusion, and our helplessness. The solution that I think that they're planning to bring forward a global government funded by a mandatory global tax, enforced by world police, and a one-world currency for everyone. And why are they doing this now? Well, one reason that not a lot of people know is that the Federal Reserve Charter, which was instituted in 1913, is a hundred-year charter. So it comes up for renewal in August of 2013. And I don't think the powers that shouldn't be uh, want to see that come up for a public referendum in any way, especially with how people are catching on now to what the Federal Reserve really is and does. The second reason, people are finding out so much about the banking system now and what's being done to people's lives that they're starting to take a stand more and more actively all the time. The banksters and the crooks are grabbing as much of this phantom money as they can and they're running for the hills with it. They're turning it into precious metals and land. They're buying up you know, real commodities. They know that the blowback will be coming soon because it always has with so-called austerity. It's happened in Ecuador and Chile and Bolivia. It's happened in Japan. It's happened in the Soviet Union, Iceland, and many more. In the U.S., we can't afford to think that it can't happen here. In fact, I think that that's a major part of the plan because we're their major stumbling block to global governance. So let's look and see what they've done to prepare. They've done the Patriot Act. They've done the Military Commissions Act. The NDAA, uh, with its indefinite detention, even assassination, even of American citizens. They've done the Enemy Expatriation Act, where they can send any American citizens away from this country and take away their passport, rendition them indefinitely. They've authorized corporate armies in case of uh, civil unrest. They've created the continuity of government scenario where the executive branch can basically ignore the Senate and the, the Congress in case of emergency. Now, they wouldn't want us to be able to effectively organize or to stay informed, so we've seen SOPA and PIPA and ACTA and the Cybersecurity Act and many other attempts 
to take over and control the internet as they have in China and Egypt and other countries. Rahm Emanuel uh, has gotten special authorization for new police state measures in Chicago for the G8 and NATO uh, summits that are coming up and he's created in such a way that those capabilities will stay in place after the gatherings setting a new precedent for the entire country. And of course there are the FEMA camps which have been built or refurbished uh, recently in case of so-called pan pandemic or civil unrest. What are the odds of all of this and much much more happening by coincidence? I want to share a quote with you from Henry Kissinger in 1991 that I think sheds a lot of light on the situation. Today America would be outraged if UN's troops entered Los Angeles to restore order. Tomorrow they will be grateful. This is especially true if they were told that there were an outside threat from beyond, whether real or promulgated, that threatened our very existence. It is then that all peoples of the world will plead to deliver them from this evil. The one thing every man fears is the unknown. When presented with this scenario, individual rights will be willingly relinquished for the guarantee of their well-being granted to them by the world government. So what can we do as individuals and groups about this type of scenario? Well, first we can get informed and we can educate our networks. One of many good ways to do this is spread this blog and share Thrive. Secondly, we can connect with our neighbors and organize locally. I recommend that you create with them as much food, water, and energy self-sufficiency as possible. As much as you can, get out of debt and out-of-dollar denominated assets, which could easily be worth 50 cents or less on the dollar very soon. I recommend you get into to real commodities such as precious metals and especially non-perishable food for emergencies. I recommend that we direct our protests, especially toward the central banking system and the fractional reserve and fiat money scams, because that's what makes everything else possible. In addition to that, get creative, sit down with your neighbors and see what you can come up with and look on our website under the solutions section. In my next video blogs, I'm planning on reporting on my visit this past weekend up to Olympia, Washington, where I was invited to take part in the Occupy Solidarity Social Forum. I want to share with you some of the exciting things that I learned and some of what I got to share with representatives from Occupy sites from all over the country. And I want to share as well the Thrive Solutions model, which Thrive groups all over the country are starting to implement. So I look forward to being with you then, and meanwhile I encourage you to be informed, be nonviolent, and be relentless. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.